planet Earth. Four and a half billion years in the making. Carved and shaped by the forces of nature. From the highest mountain to the deepest ocean. The ultimate global journey. Uncovering nature at its most spectacular. Earth Wonders. On this journey, we explore Africa's greatest wildlife haven, the Ngorongoro Crater, the awesome valleys of the Grand Canyon, the island paradise of Bora Bora, California's giants of the forest, the mighty redwoods, and Iceland's incredible volcanic glaciers. But first, we travel to the U.S.-Canada border, land of the Great Lakes, to the world's most famous waterfall, Niagara. Niagara is the second largest waterfall on the planet after Victoria Falls in southern Africa. With six million cubic feet of water cascading over its edge every minute, these are the most powerful falls in North America. There are two sections to Niagara. The most spectacular is Horseshoe Falls, so named because of its 2,600-foot-long horseshoe-shaped arc. The falls here are 185 feet high. More than 600,000 gallons of water, enough to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool, pour over the edge every second. Belgian Franciscan friar, Father Louis Hennepin, is credited as the first European to discover Niagara Falls. His description in 1678 of the wild water beast whose noise was more terrible than thunder was instrumental in bringing Niagara to the world's attention. Since Father Hennepin first gave this colorful description, Niagara has become one of the most visited tourist destinations on Earth. More than 12 million people visit this site each year. Niagara is an integral part of the Great Lakes system, which sprawls across the eastern side of North America. Lake Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie, and Ontario form the largest group of freshwater lakes on the planet. The Great Lakes were formed at the end of the last ice age, 10,000 years ago. The Laurentide ice sheet was up to two miles thick and covered most of Canada and a large portion of the northern United States. When the ice sheet receded, the meltwater filled up the basins the glaciers had carved, creating the Great Lakes. The combined surface area of the lakes is approximately 94,250 square miles, larger than New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, and New Hampshire combined. 20% of the world's fresh water lies in the Great Lakes. A huge volume of water constantly flows from Lake Erie into Lake Ontario via the Niagara River and plunges over its famous waterfalls. The falls are relatively young in geological terms and have shifted about seven miles from their original location. This shift was caused as the powerful waters of the Niagara River eroded the soft shale and sandstone beneath, causing the falls to cave in on themselves and gradually retreat. This created the Deep Gorge. 500 years ago, as the falls were retreating, the river divided into two channels, leaving an island between them, which was named Goat Island. This splits the falls into its two sections, the American Falls to the east on the U.S. side and Horseshoe Falls to its west on the Canadian side. 
The full force of both waterfalls turns the Niagara River below into a raging torrent. Here it's possible to ride a series of giant whirlpools. These whirlpools were formed 5,500 years ago during a brief and violent geological upheaval lasting only weeks or even just days. At that moment in time, the falls of the young Niagara River intersected an old riverbed that had been buried and sealed during the last ice age. The rushing water surged into this buried gorge, tore out the glacial debris that filled it, and scoured the old river bottom clean. At this time, it was probably not yet a waterfall at all, but a huge, churning rapid. When it was all over, it left behind a 90-degree turn in the river we know today as the Niagara Whirlpool. The water swirls around in a clockwise direction and reaches a depth of 120 feet. Niagara has long been romanticized in movies, and it's also become a magnet for daredevils who see its sheer power and size as an irresistible challenge. In 1961, stuntman Carol Suchek plunged over the falls, having sealed himself into a padded barrel. Incredibly, he lived to tell the tale just one of many who have navigated the falls in a variety of vessels. The most miraculous Niagara story took place on Saturday afternoon, July 9, 1960. A local man took his young niece and nephew for a boat ride in the upper Niagara River. The boat developed motor trouble, capsized, and all three were thrown into the upper rapids. One of them, a 17-year-old girl, Deanne, was plucked to safety just feet from the edge of the falls. But the other two were not so lucky. The man and his seven-year-old nephew, Roger, were swept onwards and plummeted over the waterfall. The man was killed instantly, and Roger, wearing only a life jacket and a bathing suit, was trapped in a whirlpool. Luckily, the mate of the Miss Tour boat was just making its turn below the falls when one of the crew spotted the bright orange life jacket. Miraculously, the boy was plucked out alive. Niagara is one of the most enduring images in North America, made all the more popular because it's so accessible. It's a perfect example of the raw power of nature captured within our own backyard. Coming up, an African wildlife paradise hidden in an ancient volcano. In Africa's Eastern Rift Valley, nestled in the midst of the Great Serengeti Plains, is the Ngorogoro Crater. Measuring 12 miles across, this enormous natural bowl is formed in a massive extinct volcano. It's the largest intact caldera in the world not filled with water. The immense crater encloses a natural paradise. From the forest-covered rim, 600 feet above the caldera floor, the crater walls sweep down towards a great expanse of savanna sprinkled with woodland. This 100 square miles of preserved grassland, swamp, and forest is teeming with wildlife. The Ngorogoro Crater is home to Africa's famed Big Five. Lion, leopard, elephant, rhino, and buffalo. The dense array of animals and prodigious bird life living within the haven of the crater gives it the impression of a latter-day Garden of Eden. A 
Around two and a half million years ago, a huge volcano, even higher and wider than Mount Kilimanjaro, erupted with an earth-shattering explosion. The cone of the volcano collapsed inwards as the molten lava within it subsided. What was left was an enormous crater with intact walls. Over time, the volcano became inactive and the volcanic rock weathered and was covered with soil and grass. Now the crater walls rising from the surrounding plains trap passing rain clouds. The forest around the rim acts like a sponge, soaking up rainwater and releasing it into streams, springs and pools right across the crater. This ever-present moisture ensures the growth of plants all year round. With food and water always available, it's a perfect habitat for wildlife. A rich ecosystem has developed here and has remained largely unchanged for hundreds of thousands of years. Herds of gazelle, wildebeest, and buffalo that graze the plains of Ngorogoro have no need to migrate in search of water and remain in the crater all year round. They in turn provide food for a wide variety of predators and scavengers who stalk the grasslands. In fact, the Ngorogoro crater has the highest density of predators in Africa and is inhabited by approximately 25,000 large animals in all. Black rhino, one of Africa's most endangered species, can be found within the crater. These solitary animals have a reputation for aggression and will charge if they sense a threat. Although they have no natural predators, adult black rhinos fight each other. An incredible 50% of males die from combat-related injuries. Bull elephants also roam the bottom of the crater, sometimes challenging each other for superiority. The rest of the herd shelter in woodland on the higher slopes. Big cats are not the only predators found in Ngorogoro. Jackals and spotted hyenas also roam the grasslands. Spotted hyenas are not just scavengers, but expert hunters in their own right, taking anything from birds and fish to large mammals. They'll gorge on food, eating a third of their body weight in one sitting. The crater's human guardians are the nomadic Maasai tribe. Their lives revolve around their herds of cattle, their most important possessions. For many generations, Maasai have taken their cattle to graze in and around the crater, where they have to compete for space with the wild animals. Goro Crater is one of the best places to spot Africa's most exciting wildlife. A safari here will almost guarantee sightings of some or all of the big five. Up on the rim, a series of spectacular lodges look down on the crater below. At Ngorongoro, the volcanic forces of planet Earth have created a unique and spectacular environment. The grave of a long-dead volcano is flourishing. An African paradise bursting at the seams with life. Coming up on Earth Wonders, the great coastal forests of the world's tallest trees. On the west coast of the USA, where California meets the Pacific Ocean, are the mighty redwood forests. 
The last stronghold of the world's tallest trees stretches from Big Sur to the Oregon border. These trees are among the oldest and largest living things on the planet, reaching as high as 370 feet, two and a half times the height of the Statue of Liberty. The Redwood National and State Park System, with its 37 miles of untouched coastline and 157,000 acres of protected forest land, is unique. These majestic giants have flourished here since prehistoric times. In 1980, the United Nations named the Redwood Forests of Northern California a World Heritage Site. There were once more than two million acres of old growth redwoods between Northern California and Oregon. Although most of these trees were logged in the last two centuries, several important ancient forests remain, protected within the redwood parks. Rangers, such as Chief Fire Warden John McClelland, keep a watchful eye over them. For this is the last stronghold of the mighty redwood tree. Individual redwoods can be hundreds of years old. Some reach back as much as 2,000 years. At dawn, as the warm air over land meets the cold air over the Pacific Ocean, thick mists form and drift shorewards. This beautiful daily event is the key to the survival of the coastal redwoods. The life-giving fog ebbs and flows like the ocean waves as it creeps inland, wreathing the treetops in a smoky haze. Redwoods depend on this fog for a third of their water needs, especially during the summer months. As well as the daily fogs, this coastal strip can get 100 inches of rain a year. The redwoods' wide-reaching root systems absorb huge volumes of moisture, as much as 500 gallons of water a day. A plant that can reach 37 stories high gets very thirsty. Beneath the bark of each tree, which can be a foot thick, is a sappy layer called cambium that wraps around the entire trunk. Spread out, the cambium layer would be half the size of a football field. Every year, a mature tree adds one ton of new wood to its size. The famous Highway 101 runs through the park from north to south. Leading off are smaller roads, winding through the old growth forests where the trees keep out the light, and the only sounds are the whispers of the breeze and faint birdsong. Some of the biggest trees can be found in Stout Grove in Jedediah Smith Redwood State Park. The so-called stout tree measures 26 feet around its base. While walking the trails in this magical and timeless world, it's easy to feel dwarfed by these primeval giants. Nowhere within the Redwoods Park System is more reminiscent of the age of the dinosaurs as Fern Canyon. Its steep walls are lined with exotic ferns and dripping moss. Huge fallen trees straddle the valley floor and the sun's rays filter through redwoods, towering hundreds of feet overhead. You half expect an ancient creature to lumber out of the mists. It's no wonder that this was one of the settings for Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park films.
the dense forest opens out, beautiful prairies have formed. At Elk Prairie, herds of Roosevelt elk have left the cover and shade of the forest to make the most of the good grazing. It's the end of the summer, and the males, some of which weigh in at over a thousand pounds, are starting to rut. They make it clear to the females around that mating season has begun. The prairies provide a rare chance to stand back and appreciate the full scale of the redwood trees from top to bottom. Just outside the park, a cable car ride allows visitors to skim the forest canopy and get a bird's eye view of the patchwork of giant trees. Redwoods aren't the only tall trees in these forests. Sitka spruce and Douglas firs can also reach hundreds of feet. They can act as a protective wall, buffering the redwoods from the salty coastal air. A thick fog moves in from the sea to envelop the magical hills and forests once more and provides another life-giving drink for the mighty redwood trees. Coming up on Earth Wonders, the giant glacier with a volcano at its heart. Iceland lies in the North Atlantic Ocean, just south of the Arctic Circle. The island's Vatna Yukutl Glacier is the largest ice cap in Europe. It covers over 5,000 square miles, the size of Connecticut. In places, it's over 3,000 feet deep, and it covers everything from Iceland's tallest mountain to its deepest valley. The glacier is so vast, it can clearly be seen from space, covering 8% of Iceland's landmass. But Vatna Yukutl is not a typical glacier, because encased within its thick ice coating are active and volatile volcanoes. In 2010, the volcano beneath the neighboring Ayafiatla Yukut glacier erupted. Huge ash clouds spewed into the atmosphere and led to the cancellation of thousands of flights worldwide. And that was just a small one. Beneath the crushing weight of the massive Vatna Yokutl ice field are much larger volcanoes awaiting their moment to erupt. The most potentially destructive of these volcanoes is Grimsvatn. Its last major eruption was in 1996. The heat of the erupting lava caused the thick shield of ice above the volcano to collapse. This released huge amounts of churning glacial meltwater, which cascaded like a tsunami over nearby roads and buildings, destroying everything in its path. At one point, 13 million gallons of water per second flowed from the melting glacier, making it, for a brief moment, the second largest river in the world. Today, this deadly volcano is resting, and the huge mass of water remains stable, frozen in the ice field. But the people who live around Vatna Yukutl are constantly aware that Grimsvatn could reawaken at any time. This great battle between fire and ice has been played out for centuries. The Vatna Yukutl Glacier formed two and a half thousand years ago when the North Atlantic cooled. Snowfall collected in the area at a faster rate than it could melt, creating a glacier. The oldest ice in the glacier today first fell as snow a thousand years ago. Just 100 years ago, the glacier reached its maximum size and has been slowly shrinking ever since. Today, 
the average thickness of the ice is just over 1,000 feet, but at its thickest, it's over 3,000 feet deep, twice the height of the Empire State Building. The sheer size of the glacier is breathtaking. From its center, the ice appears to stretch into infinity in every direction. The only way to explore is by snowmobile. Or customized Jeep. The colossal weight of the glacier, combined with its gradual grinding movement, has helped it carve through the rock base and create a series of valleys. interaction between volcano and ice has created a unique landscape. There's no better place to see it than Spartifoss. Murky waters from the glacier mix with the pure waters of underground cold springs and tumble over black hexagonal rocks. These strange-looking rocks are made from basalt, cooled lava that spewed out from a nearby volcano. This lava cooled at a faster rate horizontally than vertically, causing the rock to fracture into these distinctive shapes. It's hard to believe that these hexagons have formed naturally. They are almost geometrically perfect. Thousands of years later, when the glacier formed, the melted waters from the ice began to flow over these formations, carving out a wondrous waterfall. Protruding from the main body of the ice cap are smaller glaciers called glacier tongues. The slow moving force of their abrasive ice can still carve out massive valleys. The heavier and more compacted the ice in the glacier tongue is, the deeper the valley it creates. Sarlon, the weight of the glacier tongue has carved a hole so deep it is flooded with seawater, creating a lagoon. The lagoon is only 75 years old. It was created when Vatna Yukutl began shrinking after it reached its peak 100 years ago. Since its creation, the lagoon has doubled in size and is still growing. Colossal icebergs that have broken off from the glacier tongue float around in its waters. Although the icebergs sit peacefully in this winter paradise, they are a huge threat. While some get stranded on the black volcanic sands of the beach, others get caught by the tide and float menacingly out into the open seas. Icebergs have given the North Atlantic one of the most dangerous sea lanes in the world. Numerous ships have had fatal collisions with icebergs such as these, most famously the Titanic in 1912. Iceland is known as the country of fire and ice, and for good reason. Nowhere are the powerful forces so closely linked than in Vatna Yukutl. Here, volcano and ice are entwined.